Hey guys, Adam here. Welcome to another episode of On the Couch. Uh, today I'll be talking about Transcendence, or as I like to call it, Terminator point one point whatever, or whatever, something like that. Um, this is actually the directorial debut of Wally Pfister, who is the cinematographer for Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight Trilogy and Inception. And it, whatever hype was building for this movie was a little bit over than it really needed to be because what, this was meant to be like, kind of like, what I was getting from this was the Stanley Kubrick movie of the year, of the of this year, which you get a lot, uh, which you which people have seen a lot. I've seen plenty, plenty of those uh, directors trying to be Stanley Kubrick. Um, so I should start off with the plot. Uh, the plot is uh, a a uh, a professor it, who specializes in AI technology is shot and uh, dies from radiation poisoning laced in the bullet uh, but before that his wife and um, and uh, his best friend are are uh, this decide to download his consciousness into into their AI system in order to save him, which works. Uh, it's what they call transcendence. Meanwhile, a terrorist organization, the ones behind killing him, are trying to stop this. And so they kidnap the best friend to persuade him into joining their cause while the... Johnny Depp's character, who is now the AI, and his wife try to make things better by bettering humanity, by getting rid of disease, injury, even death, um, and whatnot. And and people and the rest of humanity is seeing this as a threat. You're not really off to a good start when you decide to start your movie off with what happens after the events of that movie. Because that's how this movie starts. is five years into the future and you got and you got Paul Bettany who, Paul Bettany who plays the best friend walking in a very desolate um, town where there is no technology uh, and everyone er, and everyone's using a keyboard as a door stopper is what they is what people are doing no internet no technology no nothing because and, and of course they explain it but he goes on to say that yeah Johnny Depp and uh, the wife Rebecca Hall are dead I'm, I'm not even kidding I'm like he doesn't straight up say it but he pretty much implies that they both die in this movie. And they do. So that pretty much takes away the tension. Really the tension and suspense of, of this movie. Which, which is sad because this is not a bad idea. It's just incredibly forgettable. And the... The performances aren't bad. The performances are good. It's the script that hurts it. That really, really hurts it. This real, I mean, and this movie was apparently in developmental hell for years. Uh, this was like apparently on the blacklist where of uh, scripts that would never be made. Well, it got made, but th it could have been worked on a little bit more to better characters and whatnot. Um, but yeah, the, and, but yeah, like I said, the performances, performances are good. Um, if any, honestly, if anything, the best performance 
performances in this movie are Paul Bettany and Rebecca Hall. Uh, they're the ones, really the ones with the most character. The ones who are the most well written. Because you can tell Paul Bettany is conflicted over wanting to save his friend's life, but also not wanting to damn humanity. Because he plays a professor who has a philosophy that we do need technology to survive, but how much technology is a good thing? And it ends up becoming, and it ends up controlling us more than become, being used as a tool. Um, which is a good, which is a good metaphor for what's happening now. We, we rely on technology a little bit too much. Hell, I'm, half the time I'm on my phone, or, or my computer, uh, doing, sh uh, doing something that isn't really necessarily useful. <laughs> um, Rebecca Hall, she plays, I mean, she plays the wife, the grief-stricken wife, the wife who wants to save her husband. Because she, she can't live without him. And she ends up realizing that that's not a good idea. Because, and this is the twist or whatever, is that the husband she she uh, downloads into, while it's his consciousness, every memory, every memory, every feature, whatever, every personality, it's more in line with what she wanted to do with the AI than wanting to really save her husband, if I'm making as much sense as I can with that. Um, God. um, Morgan Freeman and Cillian Murphy get the short end of this stick. Um, because they end up, and this is very unfortunate for both of them, they end up just being exposition characters. And that's really sad because I, I like them both. I really do. And it's just disappointing to see them being, not being in the movie enough to get, to, show what they're capable of because I because they're damn good actors they're really really good and it's just a shame that you don't see them enough unless the script calls for it and when they call for it it's usually exposition or an action scene um this is one thing I've always had a problem with Johnny Depp and for the last five years is that he's starting to get a little too comfortable with his performance of Jack Sparrow. To, or, or I should say his voice. Because you're starting to see it in nearly every movie he's been in since The Last Pirates. He's done it with Alice in Wonderland. He's done it with The Lone Ranger. Um... He's done it with uh, the Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus, which is a shame. Um, God, what else? Uh, I don't know about the Taurus, because I hadn't seen that. Um, and now he's done it here. I had a hard time understanding what he was saying. It sounded like he was trying to go for a British accent, but I don't think that was the case. Uh, but he was very much... He was very much doing a Jack... He wasn't doing this while talking, but he was very much talking like Jack... Doing his Jack Sparrow. It wasn't as bad, but it was pretty... It was still there. Um, the set and also... He... I'm, I'm not going to say he was the worst person in this movie, and I'll get to, the per, to that in a minute, but he was the second worst because, unfortunately... Before he gets downloaded into the uh, into the AI, he starts acting like really like a robot, like a machine. He really didn't emote anything. He just he he did it. It's like they just said, "Hey, we you're gonna end up like when you're in the AI, we're gonna try and make it look like you're the same person." It's like, "Oh, okay, that means I'm just gonna be." A machine throughout the entire movie, but even before I go into the AI, that's not really what you want to do. You you want to show obvious differences between the two, and like, I mean, and 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 it it gives a, a gives a sense of oh hey, 
this character is not, this machine is not the same as he was when he was human. And it just, it really it came off as, is he sleeping through this performance? And, and it's a shame because I like Johnny Depp. I really do. I think he's a good, a great actor. He's, I mean, he's done a pretty damn good roles. Edward Scissorhands, um, Jack Sparrow from Pirates, especially, and mostly the first one. Um, Nightmare on Elm Street, I'm gonna throw it out there right now. Cry Baby. Um, those kinds of movies I like because he does, he did more than just, because he did more than just the one performance that made him a, a number one, the biggest A-list star over 40. And it's just a shame that he has to, he's resorting to this performance because it's not helping him anymore. It really isn't. It's, as if anything, it's kind of pissing people off by this point. Because people are really, because if it's not Jack Sparrow, people don't care. And, and uh, again, that's that's a real shame. Um, now to the worst performance, and this is also got to do with part of the plot line. The terrorist organization called Rift are people who believe that technology is getting far too advanced to where people are relying on it too much. And I understand that. Unfortunately, and unfortunately, I can't agree with their methods. Now, I understand. They're, at first, they're supposed to be the bad guys. Hell, even in the trailer, they're supposed to be the bad guys. Or supposedly the villains. But, we, but not really. But when they end up becoming part of the protagonist, because they're helping the protagonist, uh, Paul Bettany's character, You can't sympathize with them, even though they give you a backstory as to why they're doing this. You can't sympathize with them because they're killing people mercilessly just because they have a freaking computer. All right, if they have a smartphone, they're gonna kill you. If you're on a laptop, they're gonna kill you. And they're using technology too. So basically, they're. I mean, and I get why they're trying, why they're using computers is because they want to be able to track people down so they can kill them, or, or, um, or being able to communicate with one another. I get that, but it comes off as they don't even know what they're fighting for, and you're supposed, and you're trying to, and you're supposed to sympathize with them, and you can't because. Most of the time, half the time, they come off as psychotics. Especially the leader, played by Kate Mara. It's, I mean, and it's not her fault, but because she's doing, she's really doing the best she can with what she's given. But it's not enough, and she just comes off as the worst performance in this role, in this movie. Um, and it's, and again, she just comes off as psychotic. Because half the time she's trying to befriend Paul Bettany, but then at the end, she's pointing a gun at him because he's not putting in the virus that um, that to that's going to take down uh, Johnny Depp's AI purse uh, creature thing. And you you just and you're just going is she gonna die yet because this would be because this would be very relieving because because you don't care about this character you can't sympathize with her you i mean even when she tells you her backstories you're like oh yeah i did care about the professor that i killed the problem was i didn't agree i don't i didn't agree with his with what he did with the monkey that he downloaded whose brain he downloaded into the ai because all the dead did was scream and scream and scream. It's like it was telling us to kill it, to end its misery. First off, it's a monkey. It's going to scream. When did you start talking, speaking monkey? Second, that doesn't justify you killing this person. You're a freaking psychopath. That's what you are. 
it doesn't and you're supposed to be helping humanity and yet you're killing innocent people just because you're using a computer and yet you're using one yourself it makes no sense um um but yeah it's but yeah i didn't care for uh kate mars performance um and uh and again, it's just, it's not her fault. It's, it's really not the majority of the performer's fault either. It, it's the script. It's, it's how, it's the, the script was just a huge, obviously just a huge letdown. It was trying to convey a message that didn't, that didn't necessarily, uh, that really kind of got lost in everything else, to be honest. Uh, and it was trying to be that, 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 that Stanley Kubrick experience, the uh, the 2001 Space Odyssey of of the year, kind of like Gravity was, but unfortunately, like I said, it it just kind of got lost in its own not ego, but something. It, it just got lost in its own, and it it got it got it got lost in its own story, basically. Um, also, one other thing that got lost in this movie was a sense of time, because uh, you, you don't, you can't really tell how how long something has been until they tell you. Uh, like for instance, when uh, it turns out Johnny Depp is dying from uh, radi a radioactively laced bullet, they say he has a month. And of course, despite him looking like he's he's dying from he's dying from cancer, um, he it doesn't feel like it's been a month. It feels like it's been a week. So, but you don't you and and even during the AI, you don't feel that you don't feel that sense of time has gone by. Uh, same thing with later on in the movie when Rebecca Hall's character and Johnny Depp's AI. Um, finds this tap this really really shitty looking down which how anyone survived is beyond me and yet people are yet despite some people there are people who are fit who look like they are healthy and yet it also looks like they're no one has eaten in weeks or I'm sorry I'm sorry not weeks years like it has been 30 years since anyone's had a good meal and you got Clifton Collins Jr. who is fit who is really really fit and yeah yeah Clifton Collins Jr. is in this he's I like Clifton Collins Jr. I think he's great in nearly anything I've seen him in um, um but anyway uh so yeah all of a sudden, uh, through funds and a bank account that Johnny Depp got from, I, I don't know how, um, he, uh, they build a lab. They get solar panels, they, get, they build a, a, a lab five stories down under, under the ground to, uh, help, to help do breakthroughs in nanotechnology, regeneration, whatnot. And you don't feel the sense of time. You feel like it's only been a month or whatever. It's been apparently two years. It's it's been two years, and you don't you don't feel it. You don't feel that sense of time. All you see, the only way you know time has passed, is Paul Bettany growing a beard. But even then, you're like, wow, he has really fast growing facial hair. How how is that impossible? <laughs> Um, oh god, um, um, I'm trying to think now, damn, um, but yeah, um, if any, besides the performances, if anything, it is shot beautifully. Wally Pfister may not have been the best director in this movie, but he can shoot a camera, and... And he really can. He knows how to use a camera, and he did a damn good job showing showing everything. Uh, very, very, like I said, very much like Stanley Kubrick. He definitely was trying to make this his Stanley Kubrick movie, uh, which, while 
I'm just as guilty. It's not exactly something I would recommend for anybody to do unless you, well, I mean, unless you, not, not as, say, your first movie anyway. Don't, don't ever try and make it like your, first, your directorial debut. Ever. <laughs> you know what? You know what? This may, you know what? That may be something I might do later on. Talk about later on uh, in a future video. Now I think about it. Um, um, uh, God. But yeah, visually it's stunning. It really is. Uh, performance wise, there it's not bad. It's just it's just a shame that a lot of people have been pushed to the side at, to be exposition, while others have been given better, uh, more character, and yet also just and yet also not enough. Uh, which again is a real shame. Um, with that said, um. I give Transcendence a 6 out of 10. It's not a horrible movie. It really isn't. It has a good idea. It, the message is there. It's just it's lost in its own story. And, um, and despite some performances being a huge letdown, um, it's beautiful. It really is. If anything... I would I would recommend this as a rental, really. If if you're curious, if you're really curious about it, just wait till it go comes out on Redbox and rent it that there. Uh, I mean, if you if you want a real experience, like a real science fiction experience, in the vein of Stanley Kubrick, watch 2001: Space Odyssey or Gravity. Or if you want to watch a movie about artificial intelligence, again, watch 2001 Space Odyssey. Or, hell, even Terminator. Terminator does a damn good... Uh, and yeah, it's an it's a action movie, but it, it, just, it talks about a artificial intelligence really a lot better than this movie does. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I just... Yeah, it's a solid rental. Not, nothing too terrible. I, it's nothing that pissed me off or anything. Um, so, uh, on the trailers, I got a lot of just the same trailers, except for one. Uh, but, uh, first I got Expendables 3. Again, my dream team. Except for the, the younger cast. Uh, the majority of the younger guys, I don't know who they are. Except for Kellen Lutz. But that guy has, not and I don't know why he's in this movie, because he has absolutely no charisma. He's a terrible actor, but he has no charisma. Now, that's not saying... That uh, Schwarzenegger is, is is a great actor, or or uh, Wesley Snipes is a great actor, or even Stallone is a great actor. But, but the thing is, and I'll probably talk about this more when Expendables Three comes out, is that they have charisma. They have presence on screen that you can get behind and enjoy. Unfortunately, that is not the case with Kellen Lutz. If you remember my uh, Legend of Hercules review. So I'm not going to get any more into that. Um, let's see. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy I got again. Uh, I'm, I know I'm going to be getting that a lot. So I'm not going to go into it. Uh, Lucy I got again. Like I said. Like I said on my Captain America review. I am really looking forward to it. Uh, unfortunately that will probably have to be, come second after Ninja Turtles. <laughs> Which, which is a really damn shame. <laughs> um, Amazing Spider-Man 2 I got. Uh, I, I noticed that this is actually a different trailer from the other ones I got. Uh, but, but, and I think, I'm pretty sure this is the final trailer, if I'm not mistaken. But I'm not, again, I'm not going to go into it because it's really, a lot of the clips are the same things I've seen before. Uh, so I'm not going to get into it. Um, X-Men Days of Future Past. This is actually the second trailer that was released. This is basically, whereas the first one gave us a tone, this one shows, basically kind of gives us a story, and also, also the tone, but also shows what is at stake here. This is what's going, this is, this trailer pulled, this is the trailer that's going to pull you in. You watch it, I mean, it, the first one will get your interest. The second one will, is what's going to pull you into seeing this movie. And I'm, and I'm really stoked about this movie. I am excited. Um, 
And despite some people complaining, I don't mind the look of the Sentinels. I really don't. I think they're menacing as hell. I think they look great. Peter Dinklage it looks amazing in his, in his porno stash look. God of wine and tits, people, in the 70s. I'm down for that. <laughs> um, uh, the, one the one new trailer I got, uh, or the one trailer of a new movie I've gotten, is Jersey Boys, which is based off a Broadway musical about the four seasons. About, uh, directed by Clint Eastwood. Which was a shock. when Because I saw this trailer and I thought, wow, this looks amazing. This looks great. And then all of a sudden, from critically acclaimed director, Clint Eastwood, I'm like, wait, what? Then I, then I remember like some of his other movies where he sang, which, again, okay, he's not a great, he's not a singer. He really isn't. So seeing him do a musical is a little weird. But, again, I'm not going to fuck with Clint Eastwood. So I'm going to stop the criticisms there. <laughs> because if he ends up watching, watching this, he's probably going to shoot me in the face from his home in California <laughs> or wherever he's living. And we get, just because he's Clint fucking Eastwood. He, he, he makes Chuck Norris shit his pants. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not afraid of Chuck Norris. <laughs> uh, also, I got a new trailer for Edge of Tomorrow. Which... I'm looking forward to. Um, I I really do want to see this movie because it looks really good. I I get and I do like the concept. I mean, it's Groundhog's Day, but it it's def, but it's um but it I like the concept of it of it being of it being. I, well, I like that concept. I, I liked it in Groundhog's Day. I liked it in Star Trek. I, God, I can't remember the name. Or uh, Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, yeah, uh, Next Gen did that. Did that concept, and I liked it with that, with that episode. And I'm... And, God, I wish I could remember the name of the episode. Ugh! God, it pisses me off. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, that's all I got. Uh, now, I'm kind of tired right now, so I'm not going to do my other review, uh, mostly because most because it's a haunted house too. I'll get that done Monday because one, uh, just refer one refer to my haunted house a haunted house rewind review. Two tomorrow's Easter, so I'm going to be coming home from work and immediately eating because I'm gonna be start one I'm gonna be starving and I'm gonna be really tired after eating um, and um, yeah and also I'm gonna be doing a new um, a new uh, on the couch reactions uh, I'm I'm not gonna say anything more about because I do want it to be a bit of a surprise but it's not gonna be anything like the red wedding like my red wedding reaction video um, also, uh, also, I am currently working on, and this is going to be, this is this is going to kind of mess up a lot of the review scheduling. Is I'm currently working on in advance on the X Men movies, uh, which I won't post until a week before the movie comes out, or within that week, I'll I'll release a new one each day. Uh, but I'll start posting those, editing those uh, before before that, so I can just go ahead and post them each day without having to worry about rendering them or anything, because uh, those that takes a while. Um, but yeah, uh, so yeah, I'm getting those taken care of. Uh, I'll have, so yeah, I'll have a haunted house two up by Monday, uh, Monday, I'll have that shot, shot and reviewed, uh, reviewed and uh, up on Monday, um, also I'll have, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 1 up by, if not this week, next week, um, the week of the movie's release, and 
I am still deciding, and week after, I am still deciding whether to whether to review a movie. And I know I and I've only missed one week before, but that's most because there were movies that I really didn't want to go see. Uh, but there are movies I do want to go see that week, the week after Amazing Spider-Man. The thing is, it's also my birthday that Thursday, uh, and I'm gonna get a little crazy. So, <laughs> so yeah, um, so yeah, so, and that's gonna be my plan. So, <laughs> so I, I really don't want to end up ruining anything because of that. So I may not do that, uh, but. Uh, also, uh, there's gonna be also um, actually actually not. I'll I'll do more updates later. I've already gone on long enough. So uh, yeah, I'll see you guys. I'll I'll see you guys Monday, um, and with my uh, with my haunted house review and my rea new reactions video, uh, and then I'll get everything else taken care of. Uh, until then, bye.